Hello! Before we begin this, even though in previous work I said Anthony Joshua could win if he used a similar game plan to use Virtuoso Parker, you know, stay light, stick to his jab, type of Ruiz makes his way into the pocket. Overall, mitigate his hand speed advantage with a reach and forework advantage. I knew, and have stated in previous work, that Anthony Joshua could win if he stayed disciplined to boxing instead of committing to fight at Ruiz's range. But honestly, I did doubt him. As a big, powerful athlete, I thought he would adjust his game, of course, but get tired in the later rounds, which might leave him prone to getting caught by a rapid swing of combinations. The moment Ruiz starts unloading in the pocket, the work rate and durability advantage would favor Ruiz once again, but Anthony Joshua did not get tired. He did not show slack in his game. He continued to persevere. His desire to win, paired with the weight he had lost in muscle mass for this fight, you know, overall, all around, he just looked amazing. I remember him saying that after his bow with Joseph Parker that a right hand will take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. But my strategy in there was kind of stick behind the jab. It's one of the most important weapons. The old saying is the right hand can take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. That's just what we saw this bout. Anthony Joshua showed a lot of discipline with here and there, gaining confidence to deviate from his game momentarily. Not trying to force the shots, just letting the shots present themselves. Yo, Anthony Joshua is not Deontay Wilder. He's been a finisher due to his physical ability, his physical aptitude, but I've mentioned before, for any coach who teaches a clinical textbook approach, Anthony Joshua is a godsend. Remaining clinical, taking his time, letting the shots present themselves opposed, directlessly looking for them. With his high fight IQ and physical ability, he touched up Ruiz for much of the fight. That was the difference this time. Andy Ruiz is durability and hand speed. He methodically works his way into his reach and forces you to bang. With his durability and hand speed advantage, he'd win the exchanges in the pocket, but Joshua, by utilizing his reach, sticking to his head snapping jabs, circling and literally jumping into tie up whenever the threat of the pocket presented itself, instantly, when he did that, I knew he was a completely different man this fight. His humility and discipline were admirable. To my understanding, a champion with longevity is not a man who always has the most pleasing style. I believe is a man who adjusts to what the moment calls for and does what he needs to do to secure victory not just for himself, but for everyone else who stands behind him. He did what he needed to do. He did not try to Deontay Wilder one punch his opponent. He is not Deontay Wilder, he's a clinician. Thus, instead, he showed self-awareness and stuck to his natural advantages versus this particular opponent. Self-awareness is, and always will be, the most valuable commodity in the market, regardless of the facet of life, regardless of the arena and this is a perfect highlight of just that. Anthony Joshua showed the awareness, the humility to recognize his strengths in proportion to his opponents, thus from there, doing his best to force his opponent into his game while avoiding his opponents. You know, for me, that was a very beautiful watch. I have a lot of respect for that. With that said, we're beginning to get a general feel for Anthony Joshua's winning condition. Let's take a further glance into the techniques Joshua implemented. The how of why he won. The first thing we should note is Anthony Joshua's stance. This is a method of measuring, pointing his foot towards his opponent's foot or slightly keeping it to the outside. When Anthony Joshua would secure his jab, note how he steps in towards the groin. This helps him line his strike against the center line of Ruiz. Just as he exhales on the touch, the jab is stiff enough to maintain distance. He's not reaching over his hips which allows him faster recovery. It just gives him more options and as he lowers his level, look, he's sinking his level into the jab. It sinks more body weight into the strike. It's pure technique. He's not forcing or specifically emphasizing power. The umph behind his jab naturally maintains distance by virtue of the technique. It's efficient body weight distribution while maintaining a balanced position thus a quick retraction into a safe position. And of course, similarly versus Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua made effective use of his post. He has a significant reach advantage. Even if Ruiz was to touch Anthony Joshua, the moment Anthony Joshua was to achieve this post, much of Andy's umph would be mitigated. 
versus Ruiz, Joshua is a strong counter puncher with the reach advantage. Thus, even if Joshua is circling towards the power hand, so as long as he maintains his range, Ruiz cannot recklessly, frivolously enter in against him. Why? Extending for his reach, he will merely open himself to getting countered if he doesn't land. Especially if there's a lot of space behind Joshua, he'll just move away. Here, after throwing a big punch, AJ finds his own right, striking on the half feet of Ruiz planting his feet. Ruiz was moving forward and as he was, Joshua caught him as his weight was planting. That's another advantage AJ had. He had much faster footwork. Circling, he would constantly force Andy Ruiz to adjust his angle. What does this mean? This means Andy Ruiz would have to lift his feet to follow or cut AJ off. What does this mean? Without your feet in position, because you're constantly walking, you know, this is a game of milliseconds. Without your feet in position, you limit your ability to fire altogether. Moving and hitting is very difficult and is not exactly stylistic to Andy Ruiz. Someone who's actually really good at moving and hitting is Tyson Fury, although notably, this is why Tyson Fury does not emphasize power the same way Ruiz does. Stylistically, Tyson Fury touches you from weird angles, like a phantom, or as Deontay Wilder would say, like some gypsy voodoo, he overwhelms your ability to actually touch him. It's really strange watching this man, he's a giant, he's right in front of you, yet people often just can't touch him. The double edge of that is, sure, he's touching you, he's getting points, he's frustrating you, but he might not have the power to finish you doing this. Andy Ruiz on the other hand though, he's like a tank. He puts pressure on you, he cuts you off, methodically, he works his way into the pocket. Then when his feet set, a volley of power punches, combinations, hail their way at your dome. If you've ever played StarCraft 1, it was one of my favorite games. He kind of reminds me of those siege tanks, you know. He gets in a position, sets up the cannon, boom. Continuous circling though, movement, mitigates Andy's ability to plant his feet in the space he needs. Understanding this, we now realize why Anthony Joshua should beat Ruiz consistently if he stays disciplined to his game. But even then, in their first bout, I believe he would have lost later in the rounds due to his overall muscle mass. That much muscle mass taxes your cardio immensely. Truly, I believe slimming down was one of his winning conditions this fight. That said, Anthony Joshua in his current state, as skilled as Ruiz may be, I believe Anthony Joshua can repeat this formula over and over again, thus secure victory over and over again, leaving Ruiz with only a puncher's chance. Ruiz is the one who would have to change his game somehow. A right hand will take you around the block, a jab will take you around the world. If he remains true to his clinical philosophy, his solid fight IQ paired with phenomenal physical aptitude, Anthony Joshua, he will be a difficult matchup for anyone, to those calling him a runner. You know, it's not easy doing what he's doing. Think about it this way, Andy Ruiz has dedicated his life to concussing grown men with his hands. He's a master at it, with one clean touch, at the right time, just like that, the bout could end. He's very methodical in his approach towards doing so. With that said, it's not easy being as disciplined to technique and fight philosophy as Anthony Joshua was. We saw that in his first bout with Ruiz, where he continuously committed to fight in the pocket. That definitely worked to his detriment. With that said, you know, I hope I've given you a bit of understanding into the technical elements of what Joshua was doing. You can appreciate it far more than just running, I hope. In my opinion, it's fighting smart, and just like any sport or even food, sure, with a bit of understanding the elements that comprise it, I'm sure you can salvage a bit more appreciation. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you like more from me, you know, please subscribe and hit the notifications. Thank you. If you did, that means a lot to me. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. It's good karma. And until next time, peace.